So this video is about a letter I recently wrote to my therapist in the partial hospitalization program. She was the first one to ever really urge me to uh, share and we had group therapy and previously I would just say nothing and I wouldn't get anything out of it either. But she was the first one to really make me talk, um, challenge me I would say, encourage me and she just really had a rebellious spirit that really made me question the things I was doing in life. Um, one of the things she did was ask us if we really had to go back to work. And of course you would say, yes, I have to go back to work. And she'd say, do you really have to go back? I'd say, yes. She'd say, well, what happens if you don't go back? Well, I have to go back because I need money and blah, 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 blah. Will you die if you do not go back to work? Well, no, I will not die if I don't go back to work. I guess maybe I don't have to go back. And for me, that was really a point where I started to challenge some of the beliefs that I had and really open up my mind to other alternative things to do in life. I didn't have to stay at this job that I was starting to dislike and go through all this stuff. I could do something different. And that was the first time that I ever realized that and she was the first to ever bring that out of me. She was also the person that made me write my um, the letter. So if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll leave it right up here. But the letter is pretty much to my dad bringing up a lot of stuff that happened in my past and wrote the letter. I had to read it out loud to the group and I sent the letter to my dad. So if you guys haven't checked it out, you should check it out after this video. But. I'm gonna read the letter that I wrote to my therapist. When I first got to Heritage Jokes, I was a mess. I had already been to the emergency room, inpatient, IOP, and failed to reintroduce myself back to work. I still had no purpose in life and honestly had little hope for life in general. I knew all the buzzwords and was able to speak the lingo to make it seem like I was okay, but still hadn't looked inside myself to find out who I was. When I got to the group, I was instantly frustrated. One of the not so good coping skills I was holding on to. You were preaching about radical self-acceptance and how great each of us were. I looked down at the page and saw words that had never described me before. Confidence, self-worth, self-esteem. It seemed like I was reading antonyms out of a thesaurus about my life. You were so happy and had such a positive energy. You seemed real and understanding, but I had already shut down from frustration. Every counselor, therapist, friend, and father figure I had ever had in my life left me, which gave me little hope for you. It took me a while to open up, but your positivity and rebellious spirit finally got to me. I started to have the smallest hope in group therapy. The best I could do was just try whatever you and Stan asked me and hope for the best. I was already pretty low, so I didn't have a whole lot to lose. I started to buy into what you're doing and got over my fear of sharing in groups, groups because my problems weren't important enough. Even though you're a bully and called on people, I appreciate you for not letting one person monopolize all the time. I'd always been quiet and shy and always missed out because I never spoke up. More often than not, I was always willing to share, but either didn't know how to start or didn't want to take up the time for my lesser problems. You were the first therapist I ever met that asked for our feedback. You were truly there to help us through whatever we wanted to work on. You were our leader, but you also guided, listened, and offered feedback. You knew just how to make each of us tiptoe the edge of comfort for us to get the maximum benefit. I spoke more in your groups about my depression and feelings in general than I had in my entire life combined. I was starting to see hope for the future. I still didn't know what my future looked like yet, who I was, 
or what my purpose was, but I finally had a glimpse of hope. When I went to inpatient for the second time, I finally had my eye-opening moment. My whole life, I let others decide how I would feel about myself. From my dad, to work, to girlfriends, everybody got to choose how much Ryan liked himself, except Ryan. I was locked up in what I lovingly called the loony bin, and all the people that I let rule my life were outside living their life. I was the only one suffering for letting them have the power over me, and in inpatient, I finally decided I had had enough. By day two out of day five, all I wanted to do was get back to PHP. Finally had the purpose, the dream, and the hope of living a life worth living. You were the one that helped me get to that place. Just what you did by believing in me and pushing me just a little bit to share was all that I needed. You've had more impact on me than any other person in my life just because you cared. I think we showed each other that group therapy can work if both the therapist and client do their part. I appreciate you more than you will ever know and you truly helped, helped me to save my life. Since PHP, I quit my job at Starbucks, bought two and a quarter acres of land in Klamath Falls, Oregon, and have been on my own personal journey to right the wrongs I caused to others in my life. I have two domes on my land in Oregon and I'm still working to get everything ready for winter. I plan on living in my dome more in the spring after I'm able to collect more rainwater and plant spring crops. I also have a YouTube with over 70 views talking about depression, life, Starbucks, and off-the-grid living. I never would have thought I would be comfortable talking to one person about depression, let alone reading the letter to the group or posting videos online. In my personal journey to right my wrongs, I've reached out to about a dozen people in my life that I had either harmed or didn't fully appreciate when I wasn't healthy. I've made every possible attempt to apologize and tell them how much I appreciate them in my life. I realized when I was going through my journey how much toxic relationships can impact someone far into the future and didn't want to be someone that had that negative um, impact on a person that once was very important to me. I've been practicing meditation and mindfulness and have been getting closer to my true self every day. I had to write you this letter because I still get emotional whenever I talk about you. You had such an impact on my life that it wouldn't be fair to me to, for me to hold on to that and not share it with you. I know you want me to be a therapist, but I'm still trying to figure out, figure out everything and haven't committed to anything yet. I appreciate everything that you did for me. I hope we can keep in contact whenever you're able to talk to former patients again. So that's my letter. And if you guys have anyone in your life that you appreciate that you haven't told them, you should do it. It's not fair for you to hold on to the good things that they gave to you and not tell them that you appreciate them back. And even if you think they know that you appreciate them, they probably don't. So just pass it along, show them the appreciation, and you'll feel better, and I'm sure they'll feel better too.